Okay, today we are looking at the Goodman side discharge unit setup today with the GTST communicating thermostat. Uh, this is the thermostat that you will use with the Goodman side discharge AC or heat pump. Uh, and this kind of picks up where the INO manual leaves off as far as this is what you will do to set up this unit once it is wired and installed. Of course, you'll want to power up the outdoor unit first and then power up the indoor unit, the gas furnace and the case coil or the air handler, uh, whichever your application has. Uh, this is going to walk you through installing a profile into the thermostat as well as doing the test mode commissioning of the equipment. Uh, so first thing you're going to want to do is have the equipment all powered up like we said and you're also going to want to have this Goodman installer app installed on either your phone, your tablet, uh, or your mobile device. Uh, once you get that pulled up you will need to do a login and a password. Fortunately, all the logins and passwords are the same. The username is Goodman with a capital G. Password is lowercase dealer with a capital D. So Goodman and dealer are your username and passwords to get logged into this app. Okay, and now that I'm uh, logged into my app here using Goodman and Dealer, uh, I'm going to begin to connect the mobile device uh, to the thermostat. I want to make sure these two are within two feet of each other, and then I'll go up to the stat and I'll hold down the uh, fan button for at least five seconds. That will take me into the wireless setup menu. Uh, then I want to go ahead and press the down button and it will say on the thermostat here uh, starting AP mode which is the apply profile mode as I'm waiting for that to pull up here it will eventually turn to AP active meaning that I have activated the AP mode on the thermostat now over here on my app I've got a couple of options cloud commissioning apply profile or set up Wi-Fi uh, for this, I'm going to want to use Apply Profile. It gives me a uh, instruction here to keep your mobile device within two feet of the thermostat, which we already have done. And then we'll just click OK. Now it's going to tell me to um, press and hold the fan button for five seconds, which I've already done. It tells me how to sync up my wireless setup menu, which I've already done. Now it's going to show me how to connect to the thermostat. Okay, and this is an important step because this will actually connect our mobile device to that thermostat via an internal uh, Wi-Fi connection. So we'll follow the instructions here. We leave this app and go to our settings and we'll connect under Wi-Fi now, I happen to be using an iPhone for this example, but the uh, other uh, brands of mobile devices would be the same. I just select a thermostat right there. If this happens to ask for a password for the thermostat, uh, you will just click on um, the password entry and enter 12345678. Now I'll go back to my app, I'll hit continue. It will ask me if I want to use this location, which I certainly can if I want to. And it will ask a permission, which we're going to say allow. And now we're going to go in and load this up. Now this is our next step that we see here. We have connected. It will say connected on the thermostat here. And it will give you a list of the equipment that we are seeing at the thermostat. So this thermostat is now communicating with the outdoor unit, uh, the indoor furnace, and the coil. Uh, as you can see on the outdoor uh, unit, this is actually a heat pump model. It shows the model serial number. Furnace typically just shows the model number 
and the coil sometimes shows a model number, but a lot of times will just indicate a serial number. The main thing you're looking here for is three uh, devices. You're looking for your outdoor unit, you're looking for your indoor coil, and your furnace. If I had just an air handler, I'd only be looking for two devices, just my uh, outdoor unit and the indoor air handler. Okay, now that we have identified our equipment, we just click continue, and then we look at our options for loading a system profile. So let's open up the profile here that we are putting together to load. Under here you will see a lot of what I would call generic information, device name, language, Fahrenheit or Celsius, all of that. Uh, when we get down here to temperature, there's a couple things I want you to make note of. Notice this dead band setting here. A lot of these thermostats are shipping from the factory with a four degree dead band. Uh, you want to make sure that you do the world a favor and correct that to a two degree dead band, give you a little tighter control of the system. Um, now this particular example is a heat pump. So I've got some additional information here that I'm going to want to add. Uh, it's going to look for an approximate square foot of the structure I'm conditioning. So I want to plug that information in there. Um, the other thing that you'll want to make note of is we have some trim profiles here for the cooling mode, uh, off delays, so on and so forth. We can set our boost mode temperature that we want to enter there. Uh, for the Midwest region here, for the dehumidification profile, you'll probably want to turn that off. Uh, this system will dehumidify uh, quite adequately without that being turned on. We also have our uh, heat airflow settings here where we can trim our airflow up and down if we like. Uh, we have our backup defrost heat temperature that we want to engage our backup defrost heat on. We also have a defrost interval here that we can set. Uh, for whatever time in between defrost cycles we want to start with. And then of course on a dual fuel system we have a balance point that we want to set. Uh, for example, this balance point here is at 20. If I want to change that to say 25, I can just select 25. And now I've added my, or I've changed my balance point. Uh, there's some accessories that you can add if you want to add a humidifier or dehumidifier. All of those can be added. Now once I have this profile complete, I need to send it to the thermostat. So at the bottom here, I just click send to thermostat, and I have successfully applied that profile to the thermostat. On the thermostat, you will see connected, and it will see connecting to, and then you will see it default back to the home screen, meaning that the profile that you've just created uh, has been loaded to that thermostat. If you get all done and decide you want to change something, you can go back into that pro profile again, make whatever settings you want to make, and then you can reload it onto the thermostat. Simple as that. So now that we have completed our system profile, uh, it's time to commission this unit. Uh, Any time that you start up a new Goodman inverter system, uh, you will need to run a test mode. If you do not run a test mode right away, you will get an E11 error code uh, anytime you try to use that equipment. So it will not allow that system to run until a test mode has been initiated. Uh, so in order to do that, we simply just go to the thermostat, press and hold mode and fan at the same time for about five seconds and it will bring up a setup menu in the thermostat itself. Now I can press the mode button and toggle my way down to mode number 20. Mode number 20 is my test mode. Once I hit mode number 20, uh, I can go ahead and hit the fan button for two seconds, and now it'll switch from off to on, and now I am running in the test mode. Now test mode is always done in the cooling cycle, uh, so it will run this entire system from zero capacity all the way up to full capacity, and it will test out all the system components. 
Uh, when it's finished, it will tell you up here, test mode done. Right now it says system test running. It will tell you it's done. Uh, you can go ahead and hit mode and return back to the home screen uh, once you are finished. Okay, and now we have our system pretty much ready to be put into service. Uh, we've applied our system profile. Uh, we have completed the test mode, uh, and everything is back to the home screen now. Uh, the only thing left to really test would be the charge mode. Uh, we can initiate charge mode into this system uh, by simply putting the system in the cooling mode and lowering the temperature to the lowest set point, which is 52 degrees. This will allow the inverter-driven compressor to ramp up to full capacity, at which point we can verify the subcooling value of the refrigeration charge. Uh, it's important to note that the subcooling value is different depending upon which outdoor unit you have. So always consult your I and O manual before you evaluate a subcooling uh, reading on one of these systems. Usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes at that 52 degree set point uh, to be at full capacity for verifying the subcooling. Uh, once that has been verified, uh, you're free to put the system back into whatever mode uh, of use you want and you're good to go. So that's it for the GTST setup. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, and again, all of us at Johnstone Supply, thank you for your business.